you're familiar with our channel, or if you've even just read its name, you'll know that our business is supercars. But because we smash up and down motorways with a boot full of kit and the slight issue of budget, our latest crew car is this, a 10 year old Mercedes estate in grey. Alright, you already know, this isn't an ordinary Mercedes estate with a dirty diesel. This is a W204 C63 AMG with the famous and ridiculous M156 6.2 litre V8 shoehorned under the bonnet. We share all sorts of supercars and hypercars on our social media, but the response to this has been incredible. And it has quite a cult following being the last of its kind to have that epic engine. So, let's go for a drive, bask in the noise of one of the greatest engines of all time, and find out if the rest of the car is actually any good as well. Until now, the only W204 C63 I'd driven was actually a Black Series. Now yeah, that was some way to start and it did set the bar pretty damn high. Now I'm not expecting this to handle anything like that did, but for a fraction of the price, it actually shares the most important element, that engine. It really does amuse me that this, frankly, pretty plain looking grey estate car has a 6.2 litre lump up front. And I think that's why we love fast estates so much. It just seems wrong. On the road though, it is anything but wrong. And before anything else, I'm gonna bang on about that engine for a bit because obviously it is what defines the car. Without it, it's pretty much a C-class estate. <laughs> but with it, it is something special. In this non-performance pack, guys, we've got 457 horsepower, 442 foot-pounds of torque. Now, compared to its biggest rival of the time, the 92 M3, it was about 10% up on power, decent, but it's the torque that made the difference. It had 50% more torque, and it just has grunt everywhere. The engine, <laughs> it performs how it sounds. It's just, just like, it's like a muscle car. engine sounds like that anymore. That old saying they don't make them like this anymore. The gearbox is a seven speed automatic and around town in comfort auto mode, super smooth, does the job really well. Now I remember in the Black Series commenting that it was a little sluggish in manual mode, sometimes didn't want to give you the downshift. Now you've got enough torque that it'll pull out of a corner at low revs anyway. But it's the same here. Just that delay to the paddle. It's not bad, but it's showing its age. You can get around the paddle delay a little by instead of having it in manual on this little mode switch down here, having it in Sport Plus Auto and letting it take care of it itself. So if I break into here, it's downshifting for me. It holds on to the gear. Actually, does a decent job, it's no PDK. But you've always got the power and you haven't got the paddle delay, but still, I kinda like doing it myself. I think because this is a bit more of a cruiser than the Black Series, the gearbox actually doesn't bother me as much. It is more just of a straight line muscle car. Having said that though, we're about to get to some twisties and you're gonna be watching the first time I've actually driven this quick around some bends because until now I've just been cruising in it and on paper at least this car's biggest weakness could be its weight because it's just about 1800 kilos now to put that into perspective an E90 M3 is about 200 kilos less than that does it feel that way well let's find out now it's December here in the UK 
it's a bit greasy, it's cold. Straight away you can feel that typical squidgy sidewall feeling of the winters, but the grip is all there. I've got confidence and the main thing, you would never think there's a 6.2 litre engine sat up there and the car weighs 1800 kilos. It doesn't feel like you want to go absolutely 10 tenths like you do in an M3. It is more of a guide it through the bends, ride all the torque sort of experience, but it does handle better than I expected. And I'd be interested on some summer tyres in summer. Now another area where I think it kind of defies its weight is the braking. You might expect them to be chocolate, but they're right there, they do haul it down well. And with the Performance Pack Plus and the 507, you actually got ceramics on the front, which should hold up even better, but for what this car is used for predominantly, it seems to do the job pretty well. So yeah, quite a cult following, spectacular engine, and it's so charming because of the engine, and because it's so unexpected from a car that looks like this. The W205, the newer C63 with a twin turbo, four litre. In every measurable way, that is a better car, yeah. It performs better, handles better, stops better. The interior is a much nicer place to be. You know, it does feel a little dated in here, but it's still nice. The infotainment's old, but it does have really good seats. They hold you in superbly. <laughs> and you've just always got that behind you. This is something truly special. Another thing that's truly special is I've just looked at the fuel gauge. You can literally watch it move. I mean, to get here, I just took it dead steady really cruised in comfort mode, automatic, and we're on 10.9 miles per gallon. But yeah, when you listen to that, it's worth it, isn't it? <laughs> Would you rather have a C220 doing 40 to the gallon or that? If you're a petrol head, there's only one answer. So to answer the question, is it any good? Well, yeah, it is actually. If it wasn't any good, would I care? Not really. So there you have the sheer comedy of an estate car with a 6.2 litre engine. I'm not sure there's another car with such a juxtaposition of looks and character. It's nothing like as focused as an E92 M3, but it's a totally different character. It's the cliché sledgehammer to the M3 scalpel. First thing I'd do would be to fit a limited slip diff for better traction and more predictable hooliganism as well, but I could live with it as it is. The engine, it just dominates, and that alone is why this car is so loved by so many people. And it's also why I've been trawling auto trader looking at coupes ever since driving this one, weighing up how much I want that noise in my life against how much I'd rather not spend all my life and all my life savings at the petrol station. It's a tough old battle. One thing's for sure though, especially if the next C63 does end up being a four-cylinder hybrid, the W204 is almost sure to be a future classic. One day, when most of the world doesn't even know what a V8 is anymore, we'll look back and laugh about the time Mercedes wedged such a silly engine into such an ordinary estate car. For now, we've really fallen for the C63, and we're making the most of that noise while we can.